So I wanted to do a quick video to introduce you to code.fun2.org. Here's code.fun2.org. You'll need a Fun2 account to log into code.fun2.org. Once you log in, you'll see something like this. You can get to code.fun2.org two ways. One, one is directly by the URL. Second one is going to bugs.fun2.org and going up here to Bitbucket. So this is sort of like our own private GitHub, except it's a little bit cleaner and a little bit faster. So let me show you how to basically do a fork and pull request, which is the model we're going to use for Fun2 development. So first you have to find the repo you're going to use and do the pull request for. So go to projects. This lists basically categories of Git repositories. Auto-generated kits are ones you're not going to do pull requests against because those are auto-generated. We don't manually commit to those. What we do instead is we do commits to kit fix-ups. And this contains the logic as well as the forked e-builds for all the different kits that get overridden. And so that's how we do stuff in the auto-generated kits. Now there are exceptions to auto-generated kits. They're independent kits. Gnome kit and XORG kit are fully forked and we manually commit fixes to those. So it's totally okay to do a pull request against these kits. So let's see how we're going to do a pull request. Let's pretend we want to commit something to XORG kit. We're gonna select it here. We're going to go to this uh, icon, which is a create fork icon. And we're going to create a fork of the kit in our own personal space. We're going to disable fork syncing, which will automatically pull in new changes. I think that's a little wacky that it does that. And if we click fork repository, we now have a copy of that repo in our own personal space. At this point, we can go ahead and clone it and we can push changes up to it, bunches of commits or fixes. And then when you're done, you just go to create pull request and you're going to submit the pull request against the destination that you want and the branch that you want. And then once this is done, then you go ahead and click continue and I get a notification. And then I can look at your pull request and merge it into fun too. The other thing I want to show you is that if you go up here and you go to view profile, you'll see that you have a few options here. You can create a repository. This would be your own, uh, your own repository. So let's create a repository called foobar and create it here. So it, just like GitHub, it gives you instructions on how to start using it. Now, I believe by default, this repository is private though. So if you go to repository settings, then you go to repository permissions and click public access enable, then it becomes public. So just know that if you're collaborating with others, you'll need to do that for your repository. The other thing you can do up here, if you go to view profile, you can import a repository from GitHub. You'll need a personal access token to do that, uh, but it does work very well. It sort of guides you through the process and you can actually import bunches of repositories that way. Oops. And if you go to manage account, that is a key thing to know. You can also get it from the main menu here, manage account. This is where you add SSH keys, which will allow you to use SSH to uh, clone as well as push up changes. And it's very similar to GitHub. You just add a key here, paste it here, and you're done. So that is the quick intro to Bitbucket. I hope you like it. Go ahead and try to send me some pull requests for some stuff on the bug tracker and let's start using it and see how it works. Thanks.